Our nutritional challenges today are feeding this high performance cow and getting her bred back again so she can do the same thing for us next year. So if we look back and know what we've done to our cow herd over the last 30 to 50 years, we need to understand the implications of, of that change in genetics, the change in the cow size and the change in the cow's performance. We need to understand what implications those have on the nutrients we need to be providing to, for that cow. Cows are bigger. Um, cows produce a lot more in terms of milk and output, but they also need a lot more in terms of nutrients. Because in most situations, she's grazing the same pasture and eating the same hay. And so we haven't hesitated in looking at advancements in genetics and advancements in technology we use on our operation. But in a lot of situations, we've stuck with our traditional nutrition program, which may or may not meet the needs of our cow. So I think the first step in determining whether a nutrition program is right is, is you gotta know what your numbers are today. So without any relative difference, without knowing what's your performance, what's your pregnancy rate, what's your weaning weight, what's your pounds of calf wean per cow exposed, what performance metrics are you keeping, and how do those performance metrics compare to the rest of the industry? I think that's the place we've gotta start when determining how good are we doing or how bad are we doing and where do we need improvement? And so knowing our performance, knowing what our goals are, and then back calculating what we need from a nutrient standpoint, I think becomes critical on any operation. So if we look at how nutrient requirements change in the cow during different stages of production, I think first we need to look at probably the bigger picture is how does intake change? So as we have a late gestation, mid to late gestation cow, she might be consuming 2.2, 2.3% of her body weight on a dry matter basis max. We take that same cow and we throw her into lactation, peak lactation, she's gonna easily consume two and a half, probably 2.7% of her body weight. So we do have cows that will eat, but from a nutrient demand standpoint, it really depends on the productivity of that cow and your forage base that's going into her at the time. And so we can make a really long answer and say, we've got to match this cow's nutrient requirements to the nutrient requirements our forage can provide to minimize cost of supplemental or purchase nutrition on our operation. Or if we want to achieve a certain market or calve at a favorable time for our labor resources or, or many practical reasons of, of why we change the cow and, and fit her to a different environment, we need to make sure that pays and make sure we're providing the nutrients that she needs. For instance, in Missouri, we've moved a lot from spring to fall calving cows. So if you look at a February calving date, which would be historically the, what we've done, that cow hits peak milk right when we hit very most nutritious grass, let's say in April and May. Now, flip the cart around, We've got this cow calving September 1st now. So she's hitting peak milk when we're probably hitting peak winter. And so the way we feed that cow, that same cow, the way we feed her needs to change. So if we look at supplement options, you're talking protein uh, on warm season grass type base, uh, lots of energy probably here in the fescue belt is gonna be what that cow needs more than anything. And then always we're looking 365 days a year, good mineral program, good vitamin program, um, and that can be achieved through a free choice product. Probably the biggest nutritional challenges we get are not getting cows bred, not getting heavy calves weaned, because we didn't provide enough calories to the cow, or we didn't provide enough protein, and thus her forage intake was low all winter and she lost two body condition scores. A lot of it ties back to very simple nutrient or nutritional issues, things that can be easily addressed or fixed. I think once we've determined what the forage base is and, and determine when we need to supplement, we need to look at our supplementation program as in the value that it brings and not necessarily the cost to our operation. So if we're doing things right and, and using our trusted advisor to develop a plan, then we're only purchasing the nutrients that we need to optimize the performance of that cow. And so any, any value or cost associated with that often returns itself in increased weaning weight, improved pregnancy rate, things that really hit our bottom line most. The cow-calf business is, is full of tradition, which is great. Tradition is a great thing, heritage is a great thing, 
legacy is a great thing, but our nutrition program shouldn't be part of that tradition. It should be evolving with the nutrient requirements of our cow. So the one takeaway, nutrient requirements of your cow are changing. She's not gonna perform unless you, you change your nutrition or evolve your nutrition program to meet her needs.